talk about federal court, federal indictments. And of course, I am talking about the story that's been, you know, been around for, for, uh, for a long time. We're finally seeing some interesting developments. Of course, that is Glenn Maxwell. Glenn Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein. Glenn was arrested on July 2nd at a mansion in New Hampshire, and she has been lying low. So a little bit of backstory on this. Of course, Jeffrey Epstein, if you, you know, missed this story by, by some miracle, Jeffrey Epstein is sort of a, a, a world-renowned, you know, known or really alleged pedophile, somebody who was trafficking and uh, having sex with underage women, flying them all over the place. He was a, a multi-billionaire, multiple properties, and really rolled with some of the high rollers in our society, people like the president, people like uh, Bill Clinton and um, um, the prince from the UK, uh, Andrews, I think is his name, I can't recall, but a lot of big names, a lot of big people. And so uh, he was indicted, he gets arrested, he gets uh, brought into on, on federal charges and then kills himself. So for a long time, we've been wondering, well, what about his partners in crime? Where about everyone else, you know, who, who, who helped him along in this conspiracy? And of course, we're talking about Glenn Maxwell. And so I actually have the indictment. I want to run through it with you so that you can see uh, specifically what she is being or what, what the government is alleging that they're charging her with. What are the crimes specifically? And so let's take a look at it. We'll run through it. Some interesting stuff, some not so interesting stuff. It's pretty, it's pretty, um, Pretty much what you would expect, I would think. Let's take a look. So this is the federal indictment, and we're going to see here it's, it was filed, uh, sealed indictment, filed the, the first count, conspiracy to entice minors to travel to engage in illegal sex act. So basically what they're doing for this entire part is they're laying out some of the facts. And so one of the first things I wanted to talk about was the timing on this thing, right? Jeffrey Epstein and this entire case, it's all recent. This is all happening right now. But a lot of the stuff that we're talking about, it happened in 1994 and 1997. You can see here in this indictment that they're saying, really, basically everything we're talking about here, minus some perjury charges, happened between 1994 and 1997. So they're very, they're very old. And when we're talking about victims who were under the age of 18 at the time, because we're talking about illegal sex acts and, and sex with children and, and, and minors, now they must be pretty old, right? If all this stuff happened between 1994 and 1997, we're talking about people who are probably between 26 and 29 if they were 17 at that time. So if you go back to 1994 and a person was 17, now that person is 26. Or you know, if they were younger, let's say they were 14, which we're going to see one of the victims, one of the allegations is she was 14, then she's going to be 23. So you, know, you can kind of get a picture of, of where this is going. You know, who are these people? There was a Netflix documentary. They may be talking about some of those people who were in there, or they, these may be other, other witnesses. We don't really know. And the indictment is not going to tell us. They're not going to tell us who these people are because we want to protect their, uh, their information. We want to protect their privacy, protect their identity so that they're not dragged through the coals on this thing. Because of course, there's going to be a lot of people, uh, Alan Dershowitz is one of them who are going to say there's not enough evidence there to move forward against uh, against Glenn Maxwell. Now, let me preface that. Right. I want to be very clear on this. Uh, I, I don't I don't have any any desire to defend uh, Jeffrey Epstein or Glenn Maxwell. No desire at all. My understanding from what I've read. I mean, I don't know the details of the facts of their case, but from what I do know, there's pretty good evidence that both of these people were human uh, debris, you know, just not good people taking advantage of young women, trafficking women, taking advantage of other people, blackmailing people, committing some of the most you know, heinous things that you can do to another person, just really grotesque, really disgusting stuff. And I think there's pr pretty much a, a consensus on that. You know, everybody would agree that from what we've seen, what we've heard, there's kind of enough evidence that we can tell that there's smoke. There's probably a pretty big roaring fire over there. And everybody is kind of abandoning ship. All of Galen's friends, all of uh, Jeffrey Epstein's friends, everybody's just kind of uh, trying to get out of the blast zone. So while we can agree that the consensus is there, you still got to ask yourself, is there enough to convict her in a court of law? That's a That's an entirely different question. And that's what we're talking about on this show. So I'm not defending what they did. I'm not defending anything that, that Jeffrey Epstein or uh, Galen Maxwell have ever done to anybody. I have a lot of empathy for 
all of you know the victims and all of the destruction they've caused over over the, the years many many years but what we're talking about now can they get convicted the reason why i want to cover this on watching the watchers i talked about this when we were talking about jeffrey epstein these these people these people in this position with with this much wealth this much power this much influence they're almost a pseudo part of the government you know they operate at a different at a different level they get a different set of rules than you or i do they don't play by this they don't play the same game if you know we saw this already with jeffrey epstein he got a sweetheart deal on some serious charges where he basically uh you know, had to serve a year in jail but was like at a country club most of the time on work release and home detention and all this stuff i mean total nonsense if you or i got charged with the, with those same deals we would have been destroyed in prison in life for the rest of our lives and it would not have been pretty but because of his power because of his influence because of his wealth he skated away from this thing and so did galen for a long 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 time and so from my perspective these people are, are as much a part of the problem as as bad cops bad prosecutors bad judges this is corruption. This is disgusting, you know, in inequitable administration of, just, of justice across the board. So we want to call this out. We want to hold them accountable. They totally blew it with Jeffrey Epstein. How did they bring this person into the criminal justice system and then let him kill himself, apparently, right? How did that happen for somebody who had so much public interest? We, we, everybody wanted justice in this case, and they really, really blew that if that's what actually happened. So... That's why we're covering the story in case you had any concern about it. But we want to make sure that the Justice Department is actually doing their job and that this is not going to be a, a case where somebody with a lot of power, authority and influence walks away because you or I would never get the same benefit of that doubt. Our clients, the people we work with, they never get those benefits. And so I want the equal administration of justice for our clients, for the cops who break the law for the prosecutors who break the law, for the judges who break the law, and for the rich, powerful elite, these people who are part of this you know, kind of pseudo oligarchy that manip manipulate a lot of the things in our country, they need to be held to the same standard. And so that's what we do, of course, on watching the watchers. All right, so let's go back to the indictment. We've got uh, a, a, most of the people here, are, are uh, actually all of them, are under the age of 18. So one of the victims was as young as 14 years old, which of course is disgusting. And so what this indictment does is goes through a lot of the factual background here. And so you can see that they're going to uh, kind of do a quick introduction and they're going to talk about the intimate relationship between Galen and Jeffrey Epstein. So apparently these two, you know, have been in a romantic relationship for a very long time. When I started reading this indictment, one of my initial thoughts was, well, why are we talking about something that happened, uh, in 1994 and 1997, you know, this is over 20 years ago. So wh wh what's, what's, what's the deal here? Then they do anything sooner. Well, I start reading through it and there's, there's more evidence actually that the reason they're going this far back is because this is the, this is the beginning. This is when it all started. So Jeffrey and uh, Galen, you know, they start their relationship and it turns into this sort of uh, connection between the two where they are, in agreement that they're going to be grooming these young girls, these young uh, you know, girls, they're not even women yet, to kind of bait them into becoming sex objects and to be trafficked for sex. So it starts in 1994 and 1997, and then it just all unravels. So then we can start assembling the spider web of all the different victims who exist because one leads to another. And so the you know I, I think the strategy then from the federal uh, in, in in federal court with the U.S. attorneys is that they are going to be starting at the beginning and then unraveling this like a ball of yarn as it continues to progress. So that's what they're talking about here. In 1994, 1997, they uh, they start a relationship and Galen Galen is actually managing his properties. They spend a lot of time together. And then in 1994, this is when. The, the grooming starts. So they, they actually entice and groom multiple minor girls to engage in sex acts. And what they do all of this, basically all this is talking about is the progression. They're talking about how it works. And it starts off kind of kind of benign, right? It, you know, it's, it's Glenn, it's uh, Jeffrey. They are uh, in, in the vicinity of these women. They work for him. They work at a store. They do, you know, they, they cross paths with them. They're at an event or something like that. 
And what ends up happening is they start talking about, uh, you know, why don't you come over and we can help you with things. We can help you with school. We can help you, uh, you know, find a job. We can help you. They take them to movies. They take them shopping. And it starts off as this, as this friendly thing. You know, it's just a nice older woman or a nice older man taking somebody under their wing. And that's how it starts. And the reason why it's important for this indictment to lay that out is because we see that as a pattern that emerges as we continue through this. When we start talking about all of the different victims, we're going to see that they follow the same pattern. It starts with shopping. It starts with movies. It starts with school. And then it turns into a massage. And then it turns into sex. And so the indictment actually says that. We go through a grooming process. It starts talking about sex talk. So you know, wh when did you first have sex? Sexual topics. Undressing in front of one another. And then it goes from the massages into the sex. And so if you haven't watched the Netflix documentary yet on this, it's Jeffrey Epstein. They, they do a pretty good job of, I think, laying out the progression through this process. It starts out benign. We're going to get you a job in Italy. And all you got to do is come over and meet him, make sure he likes you. And then, you know, one thing sort of escalates into the into another. Then what ends up happening is once they're in the middle of a massage, then uh, Galen or or you know somebody else there would start the sexual contact, and then Jeffrey would uh, take it from there, would take advantage of them, and uh, and then take it from there. And then what ended up happening a lot is that a lot of these women started to feel like there was a, sort of an indebtedness almost, right? They they're 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 almost being entrapped, and they're subject to this little prison that Galen and Epstein are building around them, and it turns into this quid pro quo thing where the victims would feel like they're indebted because of all the financial help, because of the travel, because of the trips. And so now they have to continue to perform these sexual maneuvers or these sexual favors. Keep in mind, these girls are 14, 15, younger than 18, you know, 17 year old girls who are alone. You know, I don't know what happened to their parents. None of that's covered in the indictment. I don't know how they got them to this position, but it becomes this, this exchange where they have sex with Jeffrey in exchange and Galen in exchange for something else, right? And, and the Netflix series, I, I've got a lot of uh, uh, kind of issues with how they presented a lot of the information there, but it does a good job explaining that progression. So as that, as that would happen, so the massages you know, would, would start, uh, Galen would start the massage, she would bring in uh, a, one of the minor victims who would participate, and then it would just sort of escalate right into uh, outright sex. So we talk a lot about that, a lot about what that looks like in the actual indictment. And then we talk a lot about things like jurisdiction. So the indictment does a good job of laying out where all of this stuff happens. So you can see what they're trying to do is assemble a timeline so that we can we can follow it around and we can see what happened. Jurisdiction, location, those types of things are very important because in order to prove a criminal case, you got to know that. You got to know about when it happened. You got to know where it happened. You got to know what happened. You got to know who it happened to and who did it. You have to know those things. And so this is what this indictment is doing. And so we get a little uh, tour. We get a little behind the scenes background look at some of the assets that um, uh, Jeffrey Epstein actually had. So here are a couple of his uh, properties. This one is a location in New York City. I think that was like you know, $50 million or something like that. All of these are very expensive properties. This was uh, in Florida. This one was in New Mexico. And now these are all in the federal indictment, uh, which is which is interesting. You know, you don't see a lot of pictures in indictments, but they're showing you, you know, essentially that this guy has just massive compounds massive resources, unbelievable wealth, unbelievable power and pressure and influence. And so we look at these pictures and we say, you know, I mean, how can a 14 year old girl or 17 year old girl, or I mean, even a, you know, a full adult or even, even powerful people would go, would, would, would be around a person like this and be intimidated and be, you know, under duress and feel like they have to perform what this person is asking them to perform. And so I think they're very illustrative, um, not particularly necessary, but they, but they certainly help. And then we get actually to the victims. So as I mentioned, right, they're not going to name these victims. So we have them as minor victim one, minor victim two, minor victim three. The first victim was 14 years old, 14 years old when this all started. I mean, uh, under the age of 18, the entire time, she was groomed. She uh, went, uh, again, remember the pattern I was talking about? Shopping, movies, school. Within one year of that grooming, they began sexually abusing this uh, young girl. So it took one year. So it goes shopping, movies, school. 
massage, sex. And then that person is locked, locked up. Basically, you know, they have her uh, tied for a while and this is going to continue on for a number of years. Uh, we got a couple different states where this stuff is happening. So the victim number one, it took place in Florida and New York. She was flying back and forth. There was group sexual, uh, sexualized massages taking place. Victim number two, she's under the age of 18. We don't know how old she is, but she is under the age of 18. This all started in 1996. She was flown into New Mexico in that New Mexico compound. The same deal, right? Starts with movies, shopping, school, same MO. And the reason why the second victim is important is because now you have that pattern. Now you can say, ah, okay, there's the grooming. You know, we thought maybe this was just a one-off situation where uh, Jeffrey mistakes that somebody's underage and they're having a massage and things get heated and, you know, people just explode with passion and something happens and they're all, you know, having an orgy or something like that, right? Uh, if that thing happens. But my, my point is that, you know, this is something now we see a pattern taking place. So now it's not just a random sexual fling. This is something that is systematized. It's systemic. It's, it's organized in a way that they are running a system. They're running a little pipeline. And as I mentioned, this was happening in 1994 to 1997. So they're just getting good at it, right? They're just starting to build this ring out of these women that they're going to be sex trafficking. And so this is their MO. This is their modus operandi, and this is how they work. We continue on. There were other uh, unsolicited massages, and then it turns into sex, of course. So the second makes it a pattern. Number three happens in London. So we, he had a London place as well, again, She's under 18, uh, 1994 to 1995. Again, multiple interactions. They don't go into detail about this, but I'm going to be presuming that, of course, it is the same MO, shopping, movies, school, job, promises, and then uh, unsolicited massages, and then sex. So as this is all going on, the indictment is also saying that while they were investigating Jeffrey Epstein, while they were working through this case, Glenn was not being honest at all. She was actually trying to conceal her conduct. So they go into some detail about this in bullet point eight. They talk a lot about a conspiracy, whether or not, you know, whether she was doing this by herself or whether there was actually basically an illegal conspiracy that was taking place between her and Jeffrey Epstein. And we're going to get into that a little bit further, but they are detailing that this was, you know, this was essentially a conspiracy. There were some things that she did on her own. There were some things that she did with Jeffrey Epstein. And so she's culpable for both. She's going to have criminal liability for doing the stuff that she did by, her, by herself and for the stuff that Jeffrey did. So we talk about these things called overt acts. So you see this here, overt acts. What are the overt acts? They're going to talk about some of the different places where this happened. So New York, Florida, New Mexico, London. So back in 1994, 1997, this guy was doing this everywhere, all over the world. So all of these different locations, the law was broken there. So they may have some claims. You know, There are things that they can do in, in their respective governments. This is being brought in the District of New York because a lot of this happened in New York. He had a residence in New York. So the indictment is taking a little bit of time to, to set that up. Count two is yeah, enticement of a minor to travel to engage in a legal sex act. So again, this is the one, the first one was a conspiracy between Jeffrey and Galen. This one, count two, is saying you, you specifically, Galen, you enticed uh, a minor to travel to engage in illegal sex conduct. And so you acted alone here over the three years and they're gonna, they're gonna charge her, you know, account for that. Count number three, is the actual transportation. So the first one, right, there's a conspiracy. The second one is that you specifically, uh, you know, transported. And then now there's also another conspiracy to transport. So so there was a, a, an original conspiracy. There was you specifically transported, but then you conspired with Jeffrey Epstein to transport these women. And it's kind of the same thing. You know, they're really looking for, uh, for, for every single charge that they can throw at her, and rightfully so. The actual transportation took place, and it was done for sex. The indictment goes through, talks about some of these acts in furtherance. Of, so when you're talking about a conspiracy charge, there, there needs to be a, an overt act. So... Just because you and a friend say, hey, it might be a good idea to rob that bank, that, that in some jurisdictions, in some states, that might be a conspiracy. You don't need an overt act. You don't need to actually get a gun and a, and a face mask and uh, you know, plans for the bank, and you don't need to run in there and start robbing the bank in order for it to be a conspiracy. Just the fact that you made that agreement 
is enough. But here what we're talking about is an, is an overt act. So what did they do to actually support that conspiracy? Maybe they talked about transporting these women or enticing these women or whatever, but they took some overt acts, meaning they did something very substantive, very concrete that brought this forward. And that's what this indictment is going through here. It's just saying that they enticed them to travel. They actually did travel uh, unsolicited massages, more massages, all sort of that would lead up into this sexual activity. There was actual transportation that took place. So they knowingly, a Galen did knowingly transport somebody uh, under the age of 18 from Florida to New York, count number five. These are all the perjury counts. So uh, they're, they're saying that there were some original allegations that stem back to 1994, 1997. But there are new charges that stem from lying under oath during some civil lawsuit uh, proceedings. So, uh, so as this stuff was was heating up and escalating, people started suing Galen and Jeffrey Epstein civilly. So because they 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 were out of the criminal court because they had made their deal, people can still sue them civilly. And so during these civil lawsuits, and you see a lot of these depositions take place in the actual Netflix documentary. Uh, you, you're going to see that they're answering questions. We've got Jeffrey Epstein, who's on camera, answering questions as a part of this lawsuit. Now, he invokes his rights and doesn't answer much, but you get to see him, right? And so during one of those interviews, Galen is being asked some questions, and here is what she is asked. Did Jeffrey Epstein have a scheme to recruit underage girls for sexual massages? If you know, I don't know what you're talking about. Probably a lie. Uh, list all the people under the age of 18 that you interacted with at any of Jeffrey's properties. I'm not aware of anybody that I interacted with other than obviously the plaintiff who was 17 at this point. So I'm going to guess that's clearly right a lie. You know, I'm not aware of anybody that I interacted with who was 17 at this point. I'm sure there's other people who are under that age. And all they would need to do is, is basically find somebody who was under age that there's clear evidence that she interacted with that she should remember and then boom, now she's lying. This is why you don't talk under oath or you, you don't you don't talk to people if you can avoid it, especially in legal proceedings, because you can lie without even knowing you're lying and then they can charge you with perjury for that. Count six, same stuff. Were you aware of the presence of sex toys or devices used in sexual activities in Mr. Epstein's Palm Beach house? No, not that I can recall. Do you know whether Mr. Epstein possessed sex toys or devices used in sex activities? No. Other than yourself and the blonde and the brunette, have you identified as having been involved in a three-way sexual activities with whom uh, I, I wasn't aware that he was having sexual activities with anyone when I was with him other than myself? That is my testimony. That is correct. Uh, is it your testimony that you've never given anybody a massage? I have not given anyone a massage, she says. That is my testimony. I never gave minor victim to a massage, right? So... That's it. That is the federal indictment. So she's got a bunch of counts of trafficking and uh, sex sex uh, crimes with minors. And then she's got two different perjury charges that are you know, probably going to be pretty easy to prove to. You know, they've got you know, sworn statements from these victims. They presented all this material to a grand jury, it looks like, and she was indicted. So the evidence that they presented was strong enough that they uh, decided to move forward with the grand jury indicted her. She was picked up and arrested. And so that's the background, right? Uh, that's, that's why she got charged. Very old charges, uh, some, some new, some from 2016 for the perjury charges, but the main ones, the meaty ones, the ones that you know, we're interested in, that Jeffrey Epstein was really involved in, those happened over 20 years ago in 1994 to 1997. Now that may just be the tip of the iceberg as I explained there may be this unraveling of additional, this web of, uh, uh, of information that comes out over the coming months. The prosecutor's office may already have it all because if you remember after Jeffrey Epstein was arrested, they raided everything. They have everything. They, they have his hard drives. They have, uh, uh, I think they, they broke into a safe. They found you know, thousands of pictures of underage women. My guess is that there's some probably some pretty good evidence in there about what Galen was into, whether, you know, specifically about those perjury charges. Maybe she's holding some sex toys or maybe there's some information in there that she's got and we can now see it. So she's clearly lying about those things. The other charges are going to be a little bit more interesting. Mm -hmm.